Let's take a little time to update you on what's been happening in spring training. We'll do that next on Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. Welcome into FBT in 5, a podcast that gets you caught up fast on the fantasy news and advice that you need to know. Follow and stream us on Spotify and anywhere else podcasts are found. Today is Thursday, March 11th. I am Frank Stample, joined by Scott White, and let's start with Carlos Carrasco. We had an update on Wednesday from Mets manager Luis Rojas that said Carrasco is dealing with some soreness in his elbow and won't throw for several days. Apparently, this is something that Carrasco has dealt with in past springs. Scott, is it time to lower Carrasco in the rankings? I already felt like he was going too too late if this causes him to drop even further, people get gun shy, then that's going to be great news to me. Uh, obviously, sore elbow in spring training, you, you don't know what that could lead to. It's understandable that there would be some hesitation there to pick him, but it sounds like it's just soreness. I mean, that stands to reason too. Pitchers start throwing again for the first time. Car- Carrasco's ramp up was delayed. He's experiencing that early spring soreness that he's used to feeling that a lot of pitchers feel. Uh, I haven't heard any talk of an MRI or anything, so I I, I wouldn't freak out. I wouldn't freak out. Some caution is warranted, but I'd rather take advantage of the discount if there is one. The ADP for Carlos Carrasco, according to Fantasy Pros, is 60.2 as the 20th starting pitcher off the board. When we did our Valentine's Day podcast, he was the player I loved, so please be okay, Carlos Carrasco. Let's move over to Victor Robles, who has been leading off for the Washington Nationals in spring training. His ADP right now is 160.8. Scott, I know that you are a bit skeptical about this, but if he is leading off for the Nationals lineup, he could be a potential steal at this value. Uh. Yeah, I mean, just because he's, he contributes stolen bases. So if we're talking purely a five-by-five five, a rotisserie context, then getting steals, getting a lot of steals at that price would be would be good. It would be good. It depends on him continuing to hit leadoff. And uh, to this point, I have no evidence he's actually a good hitter. He was okay-ish in 2019, but not really leadoff worthy, you know? And obviously, they have a great alternative in Trey Turner. So even if this is their design coming into the season, I'm not confident it'll last. You know, it'd be another thing if there were all these changes to his swing and he was tearing it up in spring training, but he's striking out a lot. Uh, I I, I don't know. I I don't have any evidence that he's transformed as a hitter. I know Victor Robles used to be a top prospect. There's still always a chance he turns into more. But I'm I'm skeptical that him leading off for the Nationals is going to be a long-term thing. Let's stay in the National League East. Three National League East teams. I didn't even realize that, but we do have some Miami Marlins updates here. And let's start with Sixto Sanchez, who apparently will be limited to 150 innings this upcoming season. And he's also been delayed getting to camp following a false positive COVID test. Craig Mish reported that we may not see Sixto Sanchez pitch in the season, in the regular season, until April 12th against the Braves. That is the Marlins' 10th game of the season. So does this give you any pause when drafting Sixto Sanchez, Scott? Not really. I mean, it's worth noting if if you're going to go minimalist with your uh, with your pitching staff that you'll need a sixth starter in addition or, you know, an extra starter to fill in for Sanchez at the beginning. But like the 150 innings cap, if that's legitimately what it is, that's encouraging to me because particularly after a year when so many pitchers threw so few innings, Sanchez included, uh, they could make the cap much lower than that. So, you know, there are going to be a lot of really good pitchers that are limited to 150 innings or fewer um if 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 sanchez is if we're hoping for that many from sanchez it's good news yeah let's just wrap up here with the uh, the new york yankees we have a position battle for their fifth starter spot and it's domingo herman against davy garcia who is one of the top prospects in the organization and both have looked really good in the spring what are you doing so far with these two scott domingo herman and davy garcia I suppose it's possible they could both make it if if the Yankees go six man to start the season, which a lot of teams have talked about. But I think it really comes down to Domingo Herman. We didn't really know what to expect from him after he was suspended for all of 2019, a domestic violence situation. Uh, the Yankees chose to bring him back this spring, and he has looked as good as he looked before that. Um, seven strikeouts to no walks in five innings. And I've always liked that he has three pitches he can get swinging strikes with. Um, 
David Garcia has minor league options. He came up late last year. It was, it was kind of up and down. It, it would make sense for the Yankees to send him down for more seasoning or service time reasons if they're confident Herman can contribute. And it looks so far like he can. So I'm moving Herman up on my draft boards, and I'm more interested in taking him than David Garcia at this point. The ADP for Domingo Herman right now, according to Fantasy Pros, is 290.6, so he is free in your drafts. You can get him as a late-round flyer. For more extensive fantasy baseball coverage, listen to the Fantasy Baseball Today podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, your smart speakers, or anywhere else podcasts are found. And thanks for listening to Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. This is your audio outlet for fantasy news and advice in just five minutes. If you enjoyed the pod, please leave a five-star review on Apple. We'll be back again tomorrow morning. Bye-bye. 